Welcome everyone to this video by Learn Civil Engineering where we will be working through the technique for calculating the hydrostatic load on a non-planar surface. This video follows on from principles learnt in previous videos, so I'll leave the links to these in the description and if you don't understand the fundamentals of what I'm doing at any point in this video, you can go and check out the respective video going into more detail. Calculation of a hydrostatic load on a non-planar surface can be done by direct evaluation with the hydrostatic load F equals to the negative of the surface integral of the pressure P times the unit outward normal direction N with respect to the area of the surface A. However, on a non-planar surface, the unit outward normal direction N will vary at different points on the surface and so in many instances, we can proceed by using the area projection method. So to start off, Consider the situation shown here in the diagram of a volume V of static liquid of uniform density rho that is in contact with a bounding surface S and the liquid's free surface is exposed to the atmosphere. The liquid has the following dimensions denoting the maximum length, width and depth and the coordinate directions x, y and z are defined as shown relative to the bottom corner of the volume of liquid with z denoting the vertical height above the base of s. For convenience, we will introduce the h-coordinate, which denotes the vertical depth of the liquid from the free surface. And remember that h is related to z by h equals h minus z. The surface s can be projected onto a vertical plane of area, which we will denote av, and av equals wh, and it can also be projected onto a horizontal plane of area on the liquid's free surface, which we will denote AH, where AH equals WL. FH, which is the horizontal component of the hydrostatic load acting on S, is calculated from the hydrostatic load F', prime, which is the derivative of the force F, acting on the vertical projected area AV. FV, the vertical component of the hydrostatic load acting on S, is calculated from the weight of the volume of liquid that lies between AH and the surface S. We can visualise this better splitting it into two separate diagrams, and both diagrams show a side view of the surface in the YZ plane. Looking at the diagram on the left first, it shows how the horizontal component of the hydrostatic load, FH, is calculated. The liquid is applying a horizontal load of magnitude FH to the surface, and so the surface must be applying an equal and opposite reaction force to the liquid, denoted by RH. It is important to note that FH and RH are the same magnitude and the same horizontal line of action, just acting in opposite directions. Now, considering the horizontal forces that are acting on the volume of liquid, we have the reaction force RH and also the force F' that is being applied by the liquid on the left of AV to the liquid on the right of AV. We know that the volume of liquid is in static equilibrium and therefore all horizontal forces acting on this liquid must be in equilibrium. Hence we get F prime minus RH is equal to zero and so F prime equals RH. As we can see F prime and RH must have the same horizontal line of action so therefore FH is equal to F prime. We can easily calculate the magnitude of F' prime and its point of action XP, ZP using the techniques we used in the video where we calculated the hydrostatic load on a vertical end wall. And so, it follows that F' prime, which we know equals FH, is equal to 1 half rho GH AV, and that the point of action is positioned at XP, ZP equals 1 half W, 1 third H. Now, looking at the diagram on the right, it shows how the vertical component of the hydrostatic load, Fv, is calculated. The liquid is applying a vertical load of magnitude Fv to the surface, and so the surface must be applying an equal and opposite reaction force, Rv, to the liquid. It is important to note that Fv and Rv have the same magnitude and must have the same vertical line of action, just acting in opposite directions. Considering the vertical forces acting on the volume of liquid, we have the reaction force Rv and the liquid's weight Rho Vg. 
The volume of liquid is in static equilibrium, and so all vertical forces acting on the liquid must be in equilibrium. Hence, Rv minus rho Vg is equal to zero, and therefore Rv equals rho Vg. As we can see, Rv and rho Vg must have the same vertical line of action, and therefore Fv equals rho Vg, with Fv and rho Vg acting in the same line. The liquid's weight, rho Vg, acts through its centre of mass, which is denoted with a C and which is located at a distance of yp from the z-axis, as we can see in the diagram. Having now looked over the components of the hydrostatic load, the magnitude of the hydrostatic load, f, is found by f equals the square root of fh squared plus fv squared, and this load acts through the point of action, pa, which is the point of intersection between the horizontal and vertical lines of action. Finally, we need to find the direction the force acts. For this simple two-dimensional case, where the force only has components in the y and z directions, we can find the angle, theta, that the force makes with the horizontal, using theta equals inverse tan of fv divided by fh. So, to recap, we decomposed our hydrostatic load into a horizontal and vertical component. Resolving the forces for equilibrium, and implementing techniques from previous videos, we got an expression for the horizontal component and its point of action, which is also the point of action for the vertical component. We then did the same for the vertical component, allowing us to find the magnitude of the hydrostatic load by applying Pythagoras' theorem. And finally, we looked at the expression for finding the angle the force acts at from the horizontal plane. This has been a video by Learn Civil Engineering. If you have found this video useful at all, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. If you do have any remaining questions, or would like me to cover a specific topic, please leave them in the comment section below, and I will try to respond as soon as possible. Thank you for watching.